Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to episode number 89 of Thyroid Nation Radio Live, talk show and podcast. I'm Tiffany Maladnich of Grateful Garden Biz and Mending Medicine. And my co-host, Dana or <laughs> Bowman, founder of Thyroid Nation, is coming soon. We're having some connectivity problems. Today we are talking with one, the one, and oh, for Pete's sake! <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Like, Wait, I don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I don't know. Well, well, I was trying to wait to the very last minute to see if the uh, other phone would work, but it just didn't. So I apologize. I hope the audio is was okay just... with my with my phone. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> very, very crazy. Okay, so I'm here, I'm here, and we are talking with the one and only Dr. Isabella Wentz about her new bestseller, Hashimoto's Protocol. Can't wait. Whew. Yes, now we're going to temper down that cortisol surge. That <laughs> 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 of course, Dana and I want to remind you, if you've missed any of the Thyroid Nation radio podcasts, and I was talking to someone the other day, we have had some great people on here it just yeah, amazing it's just such an amazing journey so if you've missed any of those awesome podcasts you can super easily download and listen to them at your leisure on itunes google play thyroid nation is is just all over so uh, pick that up and and listen to that anytime yeah, and we just uh, recently purchased the domain www.thyroidradio.com, so we will be connecting that to make it easier for everybody to find us. How cool, right? Oh, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, because I was right? I was so, looking at Dr. Um, Dr. Hotze. Was that uh-huh. how he pronounced it? The guy yeah, in uh, the doc in Texas, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, he followed me on Twitter, and I thought, wow, you know, that was an awesome interview on – Hormones and um, and then I started thinking. And he called us. Really, he called us from the back nine. <laughs> he called us from the back nine. <laughs> he was on the golf course. That was excellent. And it just Such was. A great it show. was awesome when I re- was thinking about it. We had yeah, really, he was so uh, fun we, and so Texas. He was very was fun, great, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and he had a great okay. thick Southern accent. <laughs> I remember. Uh. Oh, my gosh. And he was fun. And so is Dr. Christensen. It's time for him to come back on. I've seen him a couple of times with uh, the thyroid secret and everything. And, I mean, he's just funny. And so it's time. He has and a I great laugh. Wife. Yeah, and his and his wife is funny, Karen. And so I see her post all the time. And so I'm just going to reach out and say it's time, Dr. Christensen. It's, it's time. time for you to come back. So, okay, without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Isabella Wink. Right. She's an internationally acclaimed thyroid specialist and licensed pharmacist who has dedicated her career to addressing the root causes of autoimmune disease after being diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis in 2009. Dr. Wentz is the author of the New York Times best-selling patient guide, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, lifestyle interventions for finding and treating the root cause, and the forthcoming protocol-based book, Hashimoto's Protocol, a 90-day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your life back. As a patient advocate, researcher, clinician, and educator, Dr. Wentz is committed to raising awareness on how to overcome autoimmune thyroid disease through the Thyroid Secret documentary series, the Hashimoto's Institute practitioner training, and her international consulting and speaking services offered to both patients and healthcare professionals worldwide. She is my friend. I had the pleasure of being interviewed to her at her lovely house in uh, this past summer, and uh, we are thrilled to finally have her on the show. We are, and it doesn't look she, look she's quite with us yet, but um, Dr. Isabella Wentz is literally one of our absolute favorite uh, educators and clinicians on Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. I know for, for both of us, her books and her education has just been uh, paramount. I would I would say it was paramount to my healing for sure, absolutely. Because she was so thorough. I mean, her first book was just, you know, incredibly thorough. Literally, you would go through page by page and highlight and, you know, just cross these things off your list. And and um, so super super excited by this upcoming book. She's amazing. I mean, yeah. she literally is a Hashimoto powerhouse. 
She is. Woman. <laughs> I know. She is. She is. <laughs> I know. And I watched her video, um, actually messaged her husband today and told him I thought it was fantastic. It is at thyroidpharmacist.com slash protocol slash, and you have to see it. It is fantastic. You have to get your copy now. You can reserve it at that page as well, and the video is on there. It is so well done and so amazing and will hit home for so many people. I just love it. Plus, I can't wait to hear more about the book and hear what she has to say about it. Um, well, and knowing because knowing her style of writing and <sighs> the, the title, 90 Days, I mean, you're pretty much going to get – a nine, literally, what you get. a ninety-day protocol that you can just check off and follow, and ninety days. I mean, that is, know. Uh, you know, she doesn't fiddle around. She's very specific, and um, that's really awesome because a lot of people spend. I mean, when you think about it, Dana, ninety-day protocol. So many people spend years and years ruling things out, you know, and taking steps and doing this and trying to find this out and trying to find that out. And she literally gives it all in one concise 90 day plan. That's, that's awesome. That's priceless right there. You know what I mean? Well, me, I mean, you know, where was this book, Isabella, when I was in Costa Rica, right? (laughs) Right, right. Uh, Um, no, she actually, she's of course fabulous. Um, she sent me her book in, in like a PDF format because I wasn't able to get it when I was living in Costa Rica and, you know, we, we couldn't get Amazon and I, and I couldn't get it. And so um, I reached out to her when I first started Thyroid Nation and she was of course fabulous. And I just said, hi, and we've been friends since. And of course I said, you know, earlier that we had the opportunity that my husband and I went up to meet her and her husband and um, got to actually meet her in uh, July. But when I was in Costa Rica, I was just, desperate and I saw her book after I had suffered for a year and got worse and I realized maybe I should be researching this and a big mistake waiting a year so um anyway and she said of course if you can't get the book I'm sending it to you so she sent it to me and like you said it was you know it's paramount what she says and and you know when you know Isabella she's she's going to give you what she says so if her new book right. says um so yeah. Yeah, then it's going to be. <laughs> oh, there she is. Well, there love, is. it looks like she is with us. So, with no further ado, the amazing Dr. Isabella Wentz, let's get the Cyber Nation thriving. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, ladies? Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, my we gosh. Well, so thanks good. for being here. <laughs> We've been chatting you up. <laughs> <laughs> I heard. Excited. I don't know if you guys saw that I was online I was it was you know I feel so um so flattered I really appreciate it well we are excited to talk about this new book (laughs) I can picture you sitting in your um podcast room and um you know just uh ready to get going your closet (laughs) right yeah isn't that funny um I'm sitting on the floor (laughs) I'm sitting in a yoga position on the floor (laughs) I got both of you guys beat. I got my legs up. I'm leaning back. I'm ready. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. We're ready to talk uh, Hashimoto's protocol. So tell us, hi, how are you, Isabella? And tell us um, just, you know, hello and and tell us what you've been doing before we get into the book. Mm. Well, as both of you ladies know, I've been working on the thyroid documentary series. Both of you are in it, and I'm so excited to have um, to share your perspective and, and your journey with thyroid disease as well. And that, oh that's my gosh, been keeping me pretty busy um, the past six months, year or so. And prior to that, I actually was writing my upcoming book, Hashimoto's Protocol. Um, this took me about two years to write. And um, I've been editing it, you know, really like the last, seems like the last eight months or something like that, where i um, trying to get it in just the right tip-top shape of making sure that it's easy to read and that it's not, there's not a lot of repetition and that it just really shows people a path back to their health. So I've been doing that. I haven't been doing yoga as much as I would like to. So I hope to be starting that again soon. <laughs> well, we, I loved your first book. 
I mean, uh, we were chatting you up before you came on, and, and your first book to me was an absolute critical piece in my healing of just highlighting and, you know, ruling out and crossing off and, and asking for testing. And I just literally can never thank you enough, honestly. So I'm so excited for, the, for your new book because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I've yeah. I I really think it's going to help a lot of people. My my goal. Uh oh, we're losing her. I think she's Uh-oh. cutting in and out. Uh oh. I wonder if that's why you had trouble getting out on too. Let's yeah. see. She's still on, so maybe she's just or maybe she's um, just months. cutting. Huh? Okay. Sorry, you cut out. I'm so sorry, you cut out. Oh, can you hear me now? She's probably... We can. You can. We can hear you loud and clear. You started to talk. It's not like there's any static or anything, and then we just lost you in one big chunk. But Dana had quite a bit of trouble connecting, so I'm wondering if it's if maybe Blog Talk Radio is having some issues this morning. <laughs> yeah, I was having some issues too, so... Hmm. <laughs> well, Technology. Let's just jump, jump into it. Yeah, exactly. Let's jump into that. Let's jump into the Hashimoto's protocol because we're excited and we have lots to talk about. And of course, we both loved your your first book, um, as as did most everybody we know. So we want to talk about um, the Hashimoto's protocol. Let's do it. Um, so the whole premise behind Hashimoto's protocol is was actually inspired by one of my readers. Her name was T- Tereska. Isabella, I really love your first book, and I really love digging for my health. But can you, like, just give me some done-for-me protocols and just, like, recipes, give me some, like, the exact supplements I need to take, and just give me, like, a plan, like a 30-, 90-day plan, right? And I was like, well, I didn't want to do that at first because I didn't want people to think, um, you know, I was in cahoots with some companies or, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want people to think I had conflicts of interest or that I was just recommending things for whatever reasons. But then, you know, this idea kind of stuck with me and I was like, wow, there's so many people that could use, that could really, you know, use something simplified. And it finally hit home with me when I was um, working out with this Pilates instructor and this woman was brilliant and she knew everything about Pilates and she was like telling me exactly which muscles the movements were working. And then she was quizzing me, like asking me like, which muscle was that? And I was like, I have no idea. And then she gave me Pilates homework and then like Pilates videos to watch. And I was like, listen, lady, like, I just, you know, I just want to look toned in a swimsuit. Like this is way too much information for me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I was like, Oh, well maybe not everybody like wants to be like a Hashimoto's expert. And I was like, Wow, that that's like a revelation. Like I never thought of that, you know. Um, yeah. So then I'm like, how do I like make it easier for people? And through the course of working with clients, after you know, after getting my own health back, I started consulting with others. I was like, initially, I was you know using my dig at it approach, where I was looking at what are some of the triggers that are causing this for you, and it was you know it was a it was a lengthy process, and some, sometimes people felt worse before they felt better. Or sometimes it took a really long time to get them to start seeing, like, major improvements. Obviously, we'd see some improvements with gluten and dairy right away. But then it was like, you know, sometimes people were reacting to supplements. And I wanted to figure out what I could do to help more people, like, feel better faster. Like, these are the kind of things that keep me up at night, right? And um, the usual functional medicine approach is to go after the adrenals, the gut, and then do a detox or to go after like the gut and then, um, you know, and then do the adrenals and then the detox. And I was like, huh, it's interesting because a lot of the people that are reacting to supplements, the reason why they're reacting is because they're not metabolizing them properly. And I was like, what if I gave them some liver support and gave them some strategies like foods and supplements and, you know, what to cut out, what to change in their personal care routine and see what happens. And so I started doing that with people and I was like amazed because after two weeks of liver support, people were like, wow, I feel so much better. And these were my hard clients that weren't getting better. And these were people that had worked with 
functional medicine doctors that weren't getting better or had tried things on their own. And I was like, huh, I think I'm onto something. Like people are really responding to this. And so then when I developed, um, I developed a group program called Hacking Hashimoto's, I decided um, I used to be, when I used to work in public health, we used to do like outcomes research. So that's where I like to nerd out. And I had everybody like sent them surveys on the outcomes of the, the interventions, like everything they tried, they had to like say how it helped and whatnot. And I surveyed the, the two first two pilot groups of that and 65% of them felt better after the liver support. And we've had some amazing like transformations. So just within like the first two weeks, one woman was, um, had multiple chemical sensitivities. She had headaches, she had joint pains, elevated thyroid antibodies and fatigue. And this was around Christmas um, a couple of years back where she started on the liver protocol and then she sent me an email that week and she was like, hey, I am at the mall with my daughters. Like, I haven't been to the mall in ages because, you know, all the perfumes and all the oh, candle wow. stores and, and all those places, they give off scents that people who have multiple chemical sensitivities can't tolerate. And she's like, you know, my pain has resolved. My fatigue is so much better. My headache's gone. And the next time she tested her thyroid antibodies, they were lowered as well. Now, we still had to do some other things um, you know, to get things in order, but it, it was just amazing to see what can happen within one to two weeks when people really start to awaken and they really start getting their energy back and they, they shed some of the pain and some of those things that were, you know, really preventing them from feeling their best and, um, you know, feeling like their brain was working. So that was um, something that I've implemented and I, decided, you know, once I tested this, I wanted to get it out into the world. And so I worked with a fantastic book agent to develop the Hashimoto's protocol based on the liver support protocol and adrenal support protocol, and then the gut protocol, which are my fundamental protocols that I've tested with over, over a thousand people now. Wow. And um, they go through like the targeted steps that everybody can do to benefit that everybody can do um, no matter what their root cause is. And then the second part of the book is where I get to get really nerdy. And then I start talking about what are the different root causes. And I've developed some assessments. I used to do like 800,000 question assessments with my clients. And then my, my publishers who've been like really good at like, how do you make this information the most useful and the easiest format? They were like, can you cut it down to a hundred questions? And so, and I was able to, cause I just picked out the most important ones. Right. Um, right and so right. it, it's, it's, you know, it, I, what I really hope for it is that it provides people a roadmap that they can use and get themselves back to health so that they can follow their dreams and do whatever their heart desires. Cause we know that once you get your energy back, it's like your world becomes much bigger. And this can help oh, people sure. worldwide. So that's the, that's the key, but I want to I want to jump back to something you said about chemical um, sensitivities, um, really quick, just because that is a real thing. You know, my mom and oh, dad, oh, bless their heart. Um, you know, they don't get it, and you know, I think I had kind of chemical sensitivities, and of course, thyroid issues most of my life. And you know, family and friends, they think I'm. I guess the word is hypochondriac or you know, dramatic or whatever. Whereas I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so strong I cannot even <laughs> I, I help help me but it really is a real thing and that's a huge uh, testament to to you and your book and your help that you know like, this woman had this couldn't go to the mall <laughs> and then you know um, <laughs> you know wow we're gonna go to the mall again I'm another sorry, show I was getting, going there yeah I was getting <laughs> another show I sorry I stopped talking <laughs> something must be going on um that's very strange. Anyway, so yeah, so that's just a big deal because those candle stores, woo, they can kill you every time. Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, Isabella, I I would love to jump back to the liver if that's okay with you because that's really something that we rarely. I mean, I don't want to say never hear about, but it really doesn't ever get talked about in depth. And when you talk about how much improvement you saw, um 
that's just amazing to me because unfortunately conventional medicine, you know, deals with literally, you know, two tests of liver function and as, as long as you're within that range, that's the end of that subject. So can you tell us a little bit more about the liver and how that really plays a role in hypothyroidism and um, why the liver is so important to focus on? I love the fact that you're you're talking liver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that's overlooked, and it's overlooked in conventional medicine, and it's it's even overlooked in functional medicine. One of the um, you know, and you were talking about hypochondriac. I was chatting with some of my friends in the natural medicine world and they were saying, you know, I've got some of these people that say they react to everything. They react to all these supplements. They react to all these things that they should not react to. And I was like, yeah, you know, I actually have had clients like that. And once we put them on the liver protocol, they don't react to things anymore. They can tolerate supplements again. And when you think about the primary role of the liver, this makes perfect sense. So the liver helps us activate things, and the liver helps us um, get rid of things. So there's um, basically different pathways that the liver takes on. And when we have a lot of, you know, inflammation in our body, when we have a lot of toxins in our body, when we have a leaky gut, when we make circulating immune complexes, which are present in every autoimmune condition, the liver pathways sort of get backlogged. So think about, you know, if you're driving on a highway somewhere and everybody's trying to, driving somewhere and everybody's trying to take the same exact roads, you get a little bit of congestion or, you know, traffic, right? And that's essentially what happens with the liver. The liver receptors or enzymes that carry out different toxins and that turn on different types of, um, you know, beneficial substrates for us to the more active form these kind of get like a backlog. It, 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 it's like an office worker with, with stacks and stacks of, of government paper, papers that they have to process. And, 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 you know, and your one application that should take five minutes doesn't get processed for five years, right? And this is something that is very much overlooked. Um, the interesting thing, too, is T4 to T3 conversion a lot of it happens in the liver. And then when we have a person with hypothyroidism, they're not sweating. So that's another way that they're not getting toxins out. And so then the toxins go to the liver. And then when we have a leaky gut, which is present in every type of autoimmune condition, it's like the liver gets, gets um, a lot of the toxins and things get shunted to the liver because the you know, the gut does a lot of the clearing of the toxins, but when you have a leaky gut, it doesn't do it effectively. So you end up with this perfect storm to have a congested liver when you have autoimmune thyroid disease. And the amazing thing is when you support your liver and you give it some nutrients and herbs and you remove some of those, um, some of those you know, papers <laughs> from, from the office worker, then your <laughs> liver starts working better. And you start seeing the toxins clear out, and then you're no longer sensitive to everything in your environment. So, you know, like, again, going back to the overworked um, worker, like, you know, I know when I'm overworked or if if, uh, my husband's ever overworked, you're like, hey, can you do this one little thing for me? And this thing would take, like, a minute. But you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't take anymore. And so, um, and that's That happens to me all the time. Right, yeah, and that's kind of my definition of multiple chemical sensitivity. It's like not one more thing. Like, please just stop it. I have enough on my plate. And the amazing thing is you can support your liver and kind of you just stop giving it extra work for for time being, and then you can recover, like, beautifully. Um, Like I said, 65% of my, my Hashimoto's people that did the liver support for two weeks, they felt significantly better, about 30 I want to say 33, maybe 35% um, felt no difference, which, which is fine. Wow. You know, it's, it's not going to be something that's going to hurt you. And then um, about, I, I want to say anywhere from 3 to 5% felt worse during the liver support. And the symptoms they were having were pains and um, anxiety, insomnia, and headaches. And I was like, huh that actually sounds like magnesium deficiency. And so sure enough, um, and and when you start 
clearing things out your liver, you, you actually might become magnesium deficient because some of the toxins, when they leave, they take magnesium with them. And so sure enough, then we put people on more magnesium and then the headaches, the joint pains, the fatigue, and the, insom- the, the insomnia and the anxiety went away. So, so that's something that I've incorporated now where I tell everybody, you know, you, you, you want to make sure you, you also start on magnesium when you do this. And yeah, it's, it's been working really, really well. I'm, I'm excited to, you know, to go into details or share whatever you guys want to know. Yeah. Well, I love well, the I fact. Jump... Go ahead. Sorry. Jen. I'm excited. We're both no, excited. No, no, no. I want to, I want to <laughs> jump into the, um, you know, to the liver because it really is so important. And I'm so glad that you're, you know, you have this book and that you're sharing this information because, you know, I think back to when I was diagnosed, you know, and, and it's going on five years, which is, you know, crazy. And if I'd had this book, you know, if I'd had this information laid out, I would have thought of the liver first or I would have thought of the liver, you know, like, at all. Like, it took me a few years even, you know, with all the information I have and all the shows, you know, for to even consider the liver because it's just not talked about in that in that realm. And it's such an important organ, I mean, as well as the thyroid and everything else, but sweating and detoxifying of the liver and getting all the, the bad stuff out and, and your hormones that you don't need anymore and all of that stuff, it's so important. And I, I'm going to start some kind of movement. I don't exactly know what, but mindful sweating, I don't know what it's going to be. But because people think, oh people gosh. get so afraid, you know, when you don't feel good and you have Hashimoto's or you have, you know, thyroid issues, you're tired and someone says exercise or working out and you just like want to go, oh my, you want to roll your eyes and you just like, I don't mm-hmm. have the energy to. How am I supposed to work out and, and sweat and get rid of these toxins? And so I'm going to. I'm going to create some kind of movement because it is so important. And, you know, that, you know, like they have the near infrared, the far infrared saunas where, you know, if you want to just sit, you can. Not that I'm not saying that you shouldn't do movement because I believe walking at least, you know, helps and all that. But, you know, doing something that makes you sweat to help get rid of that is so important. I mean, I'm so glad you're, you're um, you know, leading with that and, and, and sharing that with people all over the world, Isabella. It's really a big, a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- thanks for that. And I definitely think it, it's kind of funny because people, when you go through and they talk about all their thyroid symptoms, they're like, I'm so tired and my hair's not growing and my hair's falling out. And they go through all these symptoms that are, you know, that are thyroid symptoms, but nobody ever complains about not sweating, right? It's never <laughs> something that like we complain about, but that's also a big symptom because, when you have hypothyroidism, you don't sweat properly. And so with my clients, um, I always ask, like, are you sweating? And they're like, oh, yeah, no. And then, like, you start getting them to do hot yoga, infrared saunas, you know, just maybe, like, even hot baths could be a great start to start moving out some of those toxins. That's a really, really great start to, to just start doing that. I know, Tiffany, you do essential oils, and I think those are fabulous for the bath. And just doing these little gentle things can be really, really helpful. Like you don't have to like run a marathon, but you with, um, <laughs> with a underactive thyroid with um, Hashimoto's, you actually have to do more work than the average person to start sweating and, you know, hot yoga and warm room saunas, hot baths, those kinds of things can kind of speed up our process for, for, you know, mobilizing some of those toxins. Our skin is our largest detoxification organ. Right. And when we, right. you know, when we, don't sweat. It's like we're missing out on that. I'm saying that's well, about sweating you. right now. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you another question because, I, to be honest, I you know I've had liver failure once, kidney failure twice, and the word detox is like the ultimate f word for me because I can get very very ill. Uh, I can be hospitalized, so I'm always kind of really afraid. <laughs> You know, anytime you hear the word detox, I have to do it really gently. I mean, if someone does a really aggressive massage on me, it, it will make me extremely ill for like four days. So I love the fact that you say liver support. Right. So tell us how liver support is different than detoxing per se. I mean, I know natural perspiration, of course, like you said, there's essential oils that can be beneficial in, in the bath for that and doing it very gently. But tell us how liver support is different than detoxing because I'm not the only person out there that feels like death warmed over with that word no. uh, detox. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I so agree with you. When I first started getting into natural medicine, I came across detox, and, and I tried some of these things. I might tell you the story of my colon hydrotherapy sessions, and um, that left me with, like, diarrhea for, for weeks. Then oh. I had a um, – I took the DMSA for chelation, and I ended up with a full-body rash. Um, oh so God, I definitely, yeah. you know, guinea pig myself in some of those detox things before, <laughs> before I really knew any better. And, um, you know, you won't find them in my books because I'm like, I recommend the <laughs> stuff that works. Right. And that isn't harmful. And, and then I did, um, fasting with, and then that, which like almost made me faint and pass out. And then these are things that people are like, Oh, I could do fasting and that helps my, you know, that helps get rid of Hashimoto's or autoimmune disease, but it's like, you know, not so fast. Like detox can be very helpful for a person who's like generally healthy, right? When you have an autoimmune condition, you're kind of at the far end. Like things have been broken for a while. And for example, if you use heavy metal chelation and your liver is not working properly, what chelation does is it pulls chemicals and heavy metals from where they're stored inside the body. And in a person with healthy liver function, these will go out the liver. And in a person with a compromised liver, these will just keep moving around your body and they might go somewhere worse. So they might go into your brain. And, and yeah, it, it's actually quite scary. Um, it's very that scary. This I mean, I can, people look at me like I'm crazy and I'm like, oh, no. Like in a really, when I tell a masseuse, you know, this has to be super gentle, you know, they don't believe me, you know, invisible illness. I look very healthy and, Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll be vomiting literally for like a 48 hour period. And uh, so, you know, we've resorted to people that only know me very well (laughs) to do that, (laughs) but it really is very scary. Like I can even tell you a story with coconut oil, something as simple as coconut oil. And I was violently ill for like four days because I took too much in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, um, so the you know the word detox. I mean, I literally like the hair stands up on the back of my neck, and I and I'm af- afraid. I mean, the word fear just you know comes right to mind. But I love the liver support. The funniest thing is, in any time that I get my blood work done, my liver is the is very low. I mean, literally, it's like two mm-hmm. and four, and I keep asking my physician, "This doesn't concern you." He's like, no, Tiffany, you know, having the low liver enzymes is totally different than high. You know, high is where there's a problem. And I've looked and looked and looked for literature, and no one really ever takes much note of when it's low. But it, it has, like, it's like in the back of my head that the liver is part of the problem, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love the fact that you say liver support rather than, rather than detoxing. It sounds like liver mm-hmm. love, doesn't it? <laughs> What, what oh, I love loving our that. liver. <laughs> liver love. We're giving our liver love, right? We're giving our I liver mean, love. Like it's such an important organ, and it rarely ever gets talked about unless, you know, things really go cattywampus. But it, it is. It's like essential to multiple processes in the body, and uh, yeah, we just don't get we just don't get enough liver love. So I seriously, I know I'm hyper focusing on the liver. But now I'm like, I'm dying for the book. I'm like, I want to read because I just love the way you write. It's very easy to understand for me. It's, it's, you know, it's, you, I speak your language, so it's super easy to understand. <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> for the liver section. <laughs> that sounds so silly, but. <laughs> Tiffany's oh, going to be like goodness. one of those, you know, you know, one of those you see in the movies or whatever. She rips out the section she wants and she goes in a cave and reads. <laughs> Uh, oh, you can always tell the difference in the books that I have because I have a ton of books, and and you know I I love the way Isabella says nerd out because that's how I nerd out. I like research and you know uh, documentaries and you know really like meaty stuff. And so you can always tell when I've loved a book because it looks like it's been run over by the car, <laughs> and then I'll have <laughs> other books that aren't even open. You know what I'm saying? But the ones right. that I love, they have, they're all highlighted and you know, the pages are all super crumbly and the book is thick because it's opened and referenced. And <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, it's a good way to tell that. So we need that, to see a before uh, and after pic of, you know, when you totally, book, right? you take a picture and then what, six <laughs> months later, how fat and ugly it looks. I can't wait a before and after Hashimoto's protocol picture. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I love it. <laughs> We should start a hashtag, that is totally right? Cool. You know, Robert Tisserand, <laughs> right, who is uh, a 
an essential oil chemist, and he wrote uh, an amazing essential oil safety book that I recommend to everybody. I don't care whether you're novice or expert, or but it, the, the research that's in there. And this book, when he signed it, he took a picture. He said, I have never seen my book in this condition. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, that's kind of how you can tell that I've really enjoyed the book is because it, it literally gets just shy of destroyed because I'm, you know, constantly referencing it. <laughs> right now it's got that's a rubber great. hand around it because the, the um, <laughs> you know, the spine is all is not holding things together, so it's rubber banded. <laughs> okay, Terrible. so one of the hashtags can be one of the hashtags can be rubber band worthy. <laughs> right. Well read. Well, I definitely, you know, Dr. Wentz, Isabel, you're you're right up there with authors for me. Just like I said, I speak your language. I hear it loud and clear, and I'm a huge fan of your books. So I'm super, super excited for the Hashimoto's Protocol. So let's go because people you. are listening. But can you tell us, because Hashimoto's, unfortunately, it's becoming more common thanks to you, as far as people's knowledge of it. But mm-hmm. I, I still talk to so many people who are hypothyroid, and they have absolutely no clue that their hypothyroidism may be autoimmune in nature. So just for those that may not have listened before or whatever, how common is Hashimoto's? 27% of our population in the United States has it. At various stages, so there's five wow. stages to Hashimoto's, and you don't actually become hypothyroid until stage four. But the symptoms which and can take the, some time, that can take yeah, some time, yeah. correct? Between Hashimoto's and and hypothyroidism, right? On average, about ten years or so. Um, and so, and the the crazy thing is, you know, it takes about an average of of ten years to get diagnosed, and women will start having symptoms as early as stage two. And that's when their antibodies can be found against their thyroid gland. Now, mo- and then, you know, that goes on and gets progressively worse. And conventional medicine basically says, okay, we're, well, if we find antibodies, we don't really do anything, right, because we can't. But, and they, they medicate people with um, thyroid hormones at stage four. And the scary thing is stage five is actually progression to other types of autoimmune conditions. So mm. if you only take thyroid hormones, you're at risk for progressing to lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. You know, it might not happen overnight. In some people, it, it happens, you know, very, very quickly. In other people, it takes 10, you know, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. But there's that progression going on. And if you do nothing to stop the inflammation and the autoimmunity within your body, you're going to end up potentially with, um, with another autoimmune condition. And this is also important because, you know, people are told that they have hypothyroidism. People are told that they have a sluggish thyroid, that their thyroid's not working, that their thyroid's lazy. I've heard some crazy things. And I, um, whenever I talk to people, like even like nurses and doctors, I'm like, yeah, I I work with people with Hashimoto's. And they're like, oh, wow, that's so great that somebody's working with such a rare condition. And I'm like, are you (laughs) kidding me? Like, do you know anybody that takes thyroid medication? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, there's about a 97% chance that this person has Hashimoto's. So in, uh, if you're living in the United States, 97% of the time, if you have a thyroid condition, it's actually Hashimoto's, but you've never been told. So your doctors probably don't test you for antibodies because right. they think there's nothing that can be done. But you can actually prevent the progression of the condition. You can reverse your symptoms and your condition when you go after the autoimmune component. So like really beyond going after the hormones so like if you have if you take thyroid hormones if you've been told you have a sluggish thyroid there's about a 97 percent chance you have Hashimoto's even if you know I recommend getting tested for thyroid antibodies TPO and thyroglobulin antibodies are the ones to get TPO and TG but even if you don't have these antibodies you could still have Hashimoto's there's something known as seronegative Hashimoto's which means you don't test positive for antibodies But sure enough, if they were to look at your entire thyroid gland under a microscope, they would see those inflammatory inflammatory autoimmune cells within the thyroid gland. So um, thyroid ultrasounds and then, you know, looking looking at the thyroid cells under a microscope is like the only definitive way to say if somebody has Hashimoto's or if they don't. So, So pretty much my advice is if you have 
a thyroid condition and hypothyroidism, then unless, you know, you don't have a thyroid gland or had radiation, then you should just assume that you have Hashimoto's and do everything um, that you would if you had Hashimoto's. In in developing countries, iodine deficiency is the primary cause of Hashimoto's with... um, since we started adding iodine to the self supply, this hasn't been the case. And that iodine deficiency presents differently than um, hypothyroidism than does Hashimoto's. So people with Hashimoto's are oftentimes going to be anxious or they might have more like um, palpitations, things of that nature, where a person wow. who... Um, where a person who has Hashimoto's, they might have some of those symptoms like palpitations and so on and so forth, where a person with just hypothyroidism, they wouldn't have any of that throughout their life or throughout their okay. life with thyroid disease. Okay, so let me let me ask a, a question, and it may be roundabout, and it just may only work for both of your nerdy brains. So if all these people have hypothyroidism and 90% of them have Hashimoto's that have underactive 97. thyroid. 97. Yeah, 97, I was just going to say <laughs> What did I say? Worse than ninety. <laughs> oh yeah, ninety-seven. Right. Sorry, ninety-seven. That means that three percent of the people that have hypothyroidism really just have have hypothyroidism, like don't have Hashimoto. That's three percent. So like, that's such it's such huge. I mean, people need to like be getting tested for Hashimoto's. Is the point, right? Right. And then just to give you more like kind of perspective on that, out of those three percent. It's people who have had their thyroids removed. It's people who oh. have had their thyroids radiated, and people born with con- without thyroid glands are included in that three percent. Oh, wow. oh my, that's pretty specific. <laughs> wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know Ooh. that is just okay, that- fascinating to me. I was one of those. Uh, I was diagnosed a Hashimoto four years before uh, I was diagnosed hypothyroid, thanks to your book by the way, but because um, I said I want the antibodies tested, and, of course, my both of my parents were hypothyroid as well, and uh, so I knew that genetics was part of, the, part of the picture, but that whole wait and see, I remember Isabella feeling so ill and having my doctor tell me, well, Tiffany, we're just going to have to wait and see, and I remember leaving the office and crying and saying, wait to see for what? Because I, I literally felt like I was dying. I'm like, wait to see what? That um, me pass away? Me? What? I mean, what are we? What, what are we waiting to see? <laughs> you know what I mean? It was right. so frustrating, and it was very depressing to have that information and and being told by my physician that we wait and see. It was horrible. Four years before um, before my thyroid. And my thyroid function, my TSHT, you know, of course, at that time, I think it was just total T4 and whatever, but everything was normal, like, you know, right smack in the middle, and, you know, uh, it was like, we well, just have to wait and see. Of course, I had a couple critical nutrient deficiencies, like B12 and vitamin D, which helped a little bit, you know, for sure, but um, what I would just be a totally different patient now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Way back then, you know, what I wouldn't have told myself way back when. I remember you asking that question, and I have to tell you, Isabella, it was so funny in the in the interview for The Thyroid Secret. You asked me what I would have told myself before. And when I left the office or what I would tell, maybe it was the question was what I would tell patients, like what I know now, or I, I remember, but it was kind of like what would I have told something, what would I have told someone in that situation and when I left mm-hmm. the interview, that stuck in my head because I remembered so many things that, you know, would have been so critical for me to know. And so I just, I just absolutely love your work. I'm sorry I got off on a tangent there. But, um, <laughs> okay. you know, to but have those, those resources. Things. Well, one of them was because m- my situation was um, involved quite a bit of stress. I was taking care of my mom with Alzheimer's. And, of course, I have, like, you know, signs and signals that go all the way back to birth. Of course, my, you know, my first bout of kidney failure was six years old, and I was really very unhealthy as a child. I was hospitalized, you know, quite a bit, and 
um, I was very unhealthy and, you know, lots of antibiotics. And then, of course, I hit, you know, um, uh, my menstrual cycle and then, you know, lots of depression and lots of issues and, you know, food just kind of rocked my world. I had, you know, horrible temper tantrums and um, just so many sad things, you know. And, and when I got older and was more in control of my own food choices, it became very clear to me that food definitely was either my friend or foe. Like there was no middle mm-hmm. ground. It was either I feel good or, oh, my God, everybody look out because, you know, <laughs> this is a totally <laughs> different person presenting itself. But, you know, what was really important for me was uh, nutrient deficiencies, food, food changes, really paying attention to my own body and what was working and what wasn't working. Um, You know, of course, I was diagnosed diabetic at 19, so I had a a totally different relationship uh, with food. And um, so when I got pregnant, which I, I really was never supposed to, and God only knows why, but... Um, I wasn't well with my first child. And um, I think for me, knowing what I know now, especially having had the HELP syndrome with my first child, was I want to know. Like if I were to talk to a woman in a childbearing age, it would be like, you need to know this stuff before you ever think of getting pregnant because you have this little person that's going to be developing in your body, that's going to unfortunately feel and, and grow or not grow and all of these things based on your body's ability to house that growth. So for me, the biggest thing was, you know, having all of that tested, you know, uh, if I was even in a situation to become pregnant or, you know, it's almost like people should have these pre-pregnancy panels you know, that you're talking about a year beforehand. And we spoke with Dr. Brighton uh, last week, and, you know, she's like six months, you know, minimum six months or more. You know, you need time to to prepare your body and make sure that everything is, is, you know, is ready for that. And so for me, that was really the biggest thing because I had four children, and, you know, uh, fortunately uh, I was taking a very good prenatal vitamin, and I even wrote that company a letter and said, I cannot thank you enough for using 200 micrograms of selenothion, you know, 16 years ago, right? I mean, who was doing 200 micrograms of selenium 16 years ago in a prenatal? (laughs) But I really Mm -hmm. feel that that played a huge part in the health of my three children that came after my son. Because, see, with my son, I didn't start taking my prenatal vitamins. Of course, you know, you find out you're pregnant six weeks in. You're, You're two months in. You know, baby's baby's already booking at that point. You know what I mean? (laughs) So I really feel that that played a huge role in the HELP syndrome. And, of course, HELP syndrome has been fairly well documented with with Hashimoto antibodies. I mean, it was like I just went backwards and it was everything just kind of domino fell in in place. And I was like, what every woman shouldn't know. They should know this. They should know this, right, that you would go in there and be like, hey, I'm thinking about getting pregnant. I would like all this done. Let's do this. B12, vitamin D, you know, ferritin. Let's, you know, do the antibodies. Let's do the free T3. I want to make sure that, that my body is prepared and ready to go to, to make these people grow into happy, healthy individuals. So for me, that was the, the biggest thing. I would say that would be my, my biggest regret because, of course, Isabella, that involved the growth of four other people. You know what I mean? What what we do to ourselves is one thing, but in a, in a pregnancy situation, you're 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 bringing another person into the world. So I mean, to me, it's like a crazy no brainer, and I don't understand why all of this isn't mandatory. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's, wow. that's for me. That's the biggest thing, truly. And I I see like little hints here and there. With my son and, and, of course, the HELP syndrome, um, a preeclampsia foundation is following, you know, my blood work and my son's blood work and health and everything else. But I, I'll tell you, it's just like that, that stress that you're carrying on your shoulders, you know, and just going, I don't want any woman that's about to get pregnant not to walk in, you know, uh, or even to originally their gynecologist and say, hey, listen, I'm thinking about getting pregnant. I want all this done. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's make sure that that the house is healthy 
you know, that the oven can hit the right temperature. And you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would just be so different. I would just be a royal pain in the fanny now. You know? <laughs> but for me, that was the that was the biggest thing because there were so many components of Hashimoto's uh, that played in in the birth of my of my first child. Wow. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, you um you bring up so many points that are that are that are super important with women and fertility and you know, I actually think that we women are, you know, obviously we have 5 to 8 times more thyroid disease than men do and its primary reason is because we carry the big responsibility of bringing new life into this world, right? And when we ourselves are not fully nourished, when we're not, um, you know, optimal with our hormones, then that's going to affect generations moving forward and forward. Um, you know, I really think this is actually part of the reason why women develop thyroid conditions more commonly is because we are so tuned into our environment that any kind of signal that something is off in the environment basically sends our bodies a signal to, like, lower our reproduction and um, make us have, you know, higher, high, more difficulty becoming pregnant or having some of these issues throughout pregnancy. And part of the reason is, you know, if, if we're very toxic or if we're very nutrient depleted, it would be, you know, in cave woman times, it would be harder for us to survive if we were pregnant and it would be harder for our children to survive if we, um, if, if we were in times of a famine or a, or a challenging situation. And so, a lot of times it's like, what's the modern equivalent of that? And, and uh, you know, nutrient deficiencies are very much a modern equivalent of being in a famine. And this is because our diet is so processed and we're not spending time outside. So we're not getting enough vitamin D. We're not getting enough selenium because it's hardly in any of the foods that we eat now. And, um, you know, th- this is sort of something that sends your body one of these stress signals, or I like to call them safety where you get the message that you're not safe if you don't have enough nutrients on board and that slows down your thyroid gland. And, you know, one of the things I always talk about is what are you doing in your life that is making you feel, that's making your body and your thyroid feel like it's unsafe. So, for example, if you have a, um, a lot of stress in your life, that can make you feel like like it's unsafe and your body, in order for it to protect you, would try to slow things down. Um, you know, if you weren't eating enough, your body would try to slow things down and um, help you rely on fewer calories. And, and I always like to kind of think about this and talk about this because it's kind of a reframe when you think about, like, what the conventional approach is to the thyroid gland. It's you medicate it, you radiate it, you suppress it, or you cut it out. And then even with us patients, we talk about being thyroid warriors or beating thyroid disease where the thyroid is actually trying to send you a signal. It's trying to let you know that something is going off without your, within your body. And, you know, my hope is that doctors will be better at reading these signals and also that patients will learn how to read these signals that we will all be kind of in tune and say like, Hey, what's my body trying to tell me now? Like, why am I hypothyroid? And it's like, let's look at, what's causing inflammation or what's causing me to have stress. So that, that's kind of how my little theory on, on it. Oh, so for sure. And so my Epstein-Barr didn't get, didn't get diagnosed until two years after my thyroid function uh, changed and I was on thyroid medication. And it was like I still just, you know, crushing fatigue. I just, you know, even on the thyroid medication. But then once those, you know, titers tapered down and I had done some things, you know, I came down um, from 90 to uh, to 30 on my thyroid medication. And I often wonder, like, I, I, I think about, you know, it keeps me up at night, you know, thinking about how many things really should be checked off ahead of time before someone really goes on thyroid medication. I mean, it did definitely make me feel better. And with four kids, that was, I'm so incredibly grateful for the thyroid medication, but I'm also incredibly grateful for your book because to me you basically told me, you know, just because you're on thyroid medication doesn't mean that your work is done here. You know what I'm saying? Like it still constantly was, you know, was still 
just nipping at me to, to find the root cause. And everyone's can be so different, right? And there can be so many at one time. It's not like it's a singular, you know, one and you're done. I mean, some people I'm sure get lucky with that. But for, right. for the yeah, rest like of us. Yeah, like they go gluten-free and everything turns around, right? Right, and you're like, yeah, oh, how lucky you are. That's amazing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, that definitely didn't work for me. Um, but, you know, also <laughs> nu- nu- nutrient deficiencies. You know, what are some of the main ones, Isabella? Because that's a really, really big deal that gets overlooked. I mean, maybe, you know, they test maybe the vitamin D or something. But what are some of the main, um, you know, top ones that, that you would absolutely definitely have on this list that we're going to make up? take into our doctor. Yeah, so um so as both of you ladies mentioned, selenium is a big deficiency. So majority of people with Hashimoto's with thyroid disease are going to have a selenium deficiency and it's not necessarily something that you can test for because it's the tests aren't just the best. So Might generally right, yeah. Right, 200 to 400 micrograms is a safe dose that's used in things like prenatal vitamins, right, the high-quality ones. And so that's right. something that you can generally do on your own, and it's been shown to reduce thyroid antibodies by about half. And it really helps with, with that anxiety. It helps with hair growth, um, helps with T4 to T3 conversion, and fantastic, um, you know, for preventing actually postpartum thyroid issues. If you take it during pregnancy, helpful for graves. Um, really, really great. Um, magnesium is also something that can be helpful, and that's, there's not necessarily a test for it. Magnesium citrate seems to be the best form for people with anxiety and with constipation. Glycinate might be better if somebody tends towards diarrhea. Thiamine is another really, really common deficiency. And around 600 milligrams per day has been shown to resolve thyroid fatigue. I wrote an article about thiamine a few months or a few years ago, and I still get like hugs from random people at conferences that are like, wow, thank you so much for your thiamine article. It gave me my life back. I saw one woman who was on disability with, and with who was on disability. And once she started thiamine, she was able to go back to work. Um, So those are kind of things you could do on your own. As far as your doctor goes and things you don't really want to kind of necessarily stop you. Let me yeah. stop you really quick and, and give you a, and give you a virtual hug because Tiffany knows where I'm going with this. But I watched the thyroid secret and thiamine was one of the things. I don't know whether you talked about in your first book or not, but it totally escaped me. And I was as I was watching it, I was like, okay, I'm doing it. So I got online and I ordered it, and it came in a couple of days from Amazon. And ever since, I've been taking it. My, both my husband and I have been taking thiamine. It worked almost immediately, Isabella, mm-hmm. almost immediately. Like, I mean, like that day I felt different. It was, wow. you know, and I, yes. So here's my big virtual hug for you for Thiamine Aww. because I, I was, I told Tiffany, I was like, this is, you have to, you have to check this out because Isabella talked right. about it and, you know, I'm, I'm, I did it and Travis and I tried it and, you know, all the issues I have with my adrenals and thyroid and Hashimoto's and all that and so I told Tiffany, and so, yes, yeah, so here's my virtual. Thank you, thank you, Your thank virtual. you, Isabella. <laughs> Next time I see you, you get you get a real hug. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And, yeah, I'm so happy to hear that it's it's better um, for you with your adrenals and hopefully energy levels. The um, interesting thing is um, some people I know that have had trouble getting their adrenals stabilized that have a ton of blood sugar issues, and then they have um, low blood pressure you start them on thiamine and their blood, I can't talk, blood pressure normalizes. And I used to be, I used to run my blood pressure from like, it was like 90 to 50, right? 90 over 50. And my doctor, I would go into her office and she was like, how are you walking? Like, (laughs) you should like, you're pretty much like, you should be comatose right now. (laughs) And um, when I started the thiamine, that was quite a few years, many years ago, maybe four years ago, three years ago, and four years ago. And my blood pressure has been normal ever since then. So it's always like 120 over 70, 116 over, you know, 76 or something. And it's, it's never been, nor, uh, it's never been um, low since that point. Well, that's so that, you know, I will check call. my blood pressure. I've got to ask you real quick. Have you ever heard about uh, thiamine being high in California? Thiamine, thiamine being high in California, I have not. Um, 
Yeah. It's something that's depleted. I wanted to look into that. Gut issues. Interesting. And it's depleted in people. Um, it, it's, I learned about thiamine deficiency in pharmacy school, and it was like you should suspect it in people who are alcoholics. And in very extreme cases of thiamine deficiency, that's, um, you know, you can probably find that on a, on a lab test and whatever. And, um, and there's like, you know, brain issues and all kinds of, you know, there's a really severe form of it. But some studies have found that in people with autoimmunity, so specifically Crohn's disease and Hashimoto's, that people tend to have like a borderline subclinical thiamine deficiency that won't show up on tests. But sure enough, you take 600 milligrams a day. And the amazing thing is you should see results within three days. Like Dana saw that immediately, right? And the supplement is really cheap. You can see have you, improvements have you ever, very, very quickly. Very quickly. Have you ever heard of anybody feeling poorly taking thiamine that, that maybe is on the lower end of normal uh, of thiamine? <laughs> Would that maybe be I, a liver? <laughs> yeah, I personally have not. Um, one of the things with the B vitamins is that they are meta- that they're not like absorbed in the body, so you sort of pee out what you don't need. So the what B vitamins tend to have a pretty low, like they don't build up in the body like vitamin D does. But yeah, I mean, whenever um, I have people who have reactions to any of the B vitamins, I'm thinking like methylation and liver right? and how do you right, get, right, right. Um, and, and that's why, you know, I, I would say I haven't, but in my clients, I always start them on liver support first. Well, now you, now well, you know somebody because that's Tiffany. So <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm like crazy drug somebody. sensitive. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm crazy drug sensitive. Like I take, ridiculously low amounts of things otherwise it causes me big problems <laughs> but um yeah it's uh which i think uh, but it's not so just, it's not just thiamine it's it's there are many no. things it's no no but i think it's so interesting nuts. to know um isabella because tiffany and i both have hashimotos and we both have you know similar issues and yet we're both so absolutely different so to me that just you know reiterates what we say on the show all the time everybody it's so different. There is no one way. Because here I am, I get your, you know, I see the, the episode with thiamine and I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm doing it. I do it. I order it. And a couple of days after I start taking it, I'm like, Tiffany. And I tell her and she goes, oh yeah, thiamine is, you know, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> so yeah, you, know, yeah. Just, you never, never know. Right. But for the most part, I would say Tiffany's, you know, an extreme case. So uh, yeah, I definitely am not. I think Anna has labeled me opposite woman. <laughs> Which, and, and you I've know, been dealing Tiffany, with that since childhood. <laughs> that's something that I've seen in people with liver um, congestion is that they're sensitive to supplements. So that's something that, you know, that so I would you knew look where into I was go- for you sure. You that in. You knew where I was going with that, right? <laughs> uh, I said to Dan, yeah, I, I said, mean, it's got to be the liver. <laughs> So that funny. that would make sense to me, and I, it's just like, um, you know, like that. That's such a big issue for people, and the the whole like sensitivity to a lot of different things and chemical intolerance. And when you think about it, it's like when you give yourself a regular dose and you have this liver congestion, it's basically the the nutrient or whatever you're taking doesn't get properly turned on, right. and then it doesn't get right. properly eliminated. So, like, for people with liver issues, um, you know, I, I haven't seen any studies to this, but it's like like we say that everything gets cleared out, but for them, are they actually retaining things longer than the average person, right, within their bodies? And that's causing potential issues because generally if your liver is working fine and if all of your path- pathways are working fine, you're going to be clearing out most of your vitamins except for A, D, E, and K, which get stored in our fat. Right. Well, and it's it's, okay. it's funny that you say that. Like, it, there, you know, there's not a whole lot of research, but, you know, in my head and in my nerding out, which is, you know, usually in the shower for some reason, I have these moments of, like, you know, clairvoyance and clarity in the shower for whatever mm-hmm. reason. But, you know, uh, every time I've had the kidney or liver failure, it's always been in a situation of uh, some kind of chemical or toxicity overload. So there's really no warning. I pretty much, you know, like wake up one day and all of a sudden I'm in kidney failure. But um, And that would totally make sense. 
right? If you thought about that, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, m- you know, my conventional medicine doctor is, you know, to them my liver function is great because it's low and there's really no documentation of, of any kind of problems per se with that. And I'm like, it's got to be the liver. Are you sure there's nothing? <laughs> like, no, no, if it's high, that's when we have a problem. I'm like, ah, I'm just not buying it. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I have to thank you. Like you're like the single person. Anytime I want any kind of information, you're the one I go to for, you know, because you have that tendency to think way outside of the box. I mean, you were the first person that I ever heard bring up the fact that a hypothyroid person who started as hyper with Graves' disease, and it used to always make me scratch my head. Like, how can the treatment be the same? for two people that came to that point from entirely different places. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just because the thyroid is removed and you all of a sudden become hypo or, you know, radioiodine or treatment or whatever it is, that we're going to treat you the exact same way that someone came to from being hypothyroid or Hashimoto. You're like, that just can't work. (laughs) (laughs) That just can't be effective, right? That, you know, um, and you were the very first person that I ever heard point out, point that out, right? These are two entirely different patients. I just love it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm not a stalker. I swear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She has, plenty, she has plenty of secret stalkers she doesn't know about, but they're all, they're all for, for love and support. Poor Isabella. So, yes, I, I feel know. Okay, well, well I don't want to take up. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but do can we have a little bit while, a little bit longer with you, Isabella? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have um. Yeah, I have about twenty minutes or so. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. So, because I want to talk just a little bit. I mean, I want to do you know, there's a few things I want to see if we can squeeze in. I wanted to talk about um, some unconventional triggers for Hashimoto's that you know not many people are talking about because that's kind of a big deal. Did we cover um you know very many of those? I don't think we covered anything. No, um, one of the one of the ones that I really want to get the word out about, and thank you for asking, is um, breast implants. Now, obviously, mm. not every woman has breast implants, and not every woman with Hashimoto's has breast implants. But this is something I've seen um, in the last few years. So I always have people do like a timeline, and I suggest everybody do one where you go through and you say what was going on, like all of your your entire like health history, what surgeries you've had, what infections you've had, accidents, trauma, stress, you know, all along the way. And like when you remember having symptoms of feeling unwell and I was seeing like some of my clients were like doing really great. And then they got breast implants and within like a year, then they started, their health started declining. And, you know, obviously that's like a really big deal because you, you have to remove them. And I've had a few um, clients and readers who have removed their breast implants and um, they were able to get into remission. So this is something, and they were doing like, you know, the diet and they were doing all those things and they were getting better, but it wasn't enough. And it, and it makes sense to me because when you think about autoimmunity, it's the body recognizing the thyroid gland as a foreign invader because it's confused and because it's, um, You know, molecular mimicry is one theory where infections and toxins, they get attacked by the body, by the immune system, but anything that looks like them also gets attacked. And so the, you know, there's so many different chemical structures in various places that it's plausible that, you know, the breast implants for some reason may look like the thyroid gland or perhaps they just overburden those detox pathways where we're not detoxing properly and we just build up a ton of, you know, toxicity within our bodies. So that's like one kind of unusual one that I don't think a lot of people think about. Um, and I want to just throw in there too to add to that because it um, it is a really big deal. And just to put it out there, I do have, have implants, so I'll be looking um, deeper into that. But I'm in a Facebook group about it, and I've seen some amazing stories about when people get them explanted, post-explant pictures and just all kinds of things. But I want to mention that, it doesn't matter what kind of implants you have or if they're leaking or if they're not or if they're perfectly fine. What Isabella is saying is that your body sees it as a foreign substance, and that's 
you know, um, is, you know, it invades this or it, you know, attacks it or it, 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 can, it gets confused. And because a lot of people in the groups are saying, oh, well, mine aren't, mine aren't leaking or I don't, you know, have pain or I don't, you know, but that's not really the point, right? Right. Yeah, it's just they could be perfectly fine, but your body mm-hmm. is rejecting them. And, you that's know, this right. actually happens with um, if, like, somebody gets a transplanted organ, then they start developing, like, an auto immune reaction, <laughs> right? Right, right. And, and like you um, said, it makes perfect sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, yeah, and that's kind of a well, unconventional consideration. Yeah, and it's a good one. And just, just a little tidbit, just so people know, you know, I've seen in, in lots of groups where people are going um, for these explants and feeling better, but then also getting fat, um, inserted, you know, their own body fat so that you, they don't lose mm-hmm. some of they don't look funny after so that they, there's lots of different things that they can do naturally to help um, if you are doing the explant surgery. So I think that's really big because you know, people are afraid, well, what am I going to look like? And I did this for these reasons. And, and so there are ways. So, you know, so let's just move on to some other unconventional, but I wanted to let people know that there's some, some things they have out there that can help make you feel um, so bad about yourself. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and there's parasites. So Blastocystis hominis is a parasite that I've seen for quite a few years with my clients. And the interesting thing is when you um, – it's also associated with hives and irritable bowel syndrome. And when you remove it or you, you get rid of it, um, I've seen people's hives going away, irritable bowel syndrome going away, their food sensitivities, like especially to grains, like – like vanishing and, um, you know, thyroid antibodies lowering. And in some cases people have gone into remission and have been able to wean off of medications. There was finally a study published on this last year, which I was really excited about. Um, it was a case study of, of a person, but that's, you know, we don't typically think about parasites in our modern world, but with my clients, with, um, you know, Hashimoto's, the people that don't go into remission on diet, because those are, like, the only kind of people I see. Um, they, um, my stats were that 80% of them had some sort of a gut infection, and this was H. pylori or blastocystis hominis were the two most common. And then I've just seen a whole bunch of different yeast, SIBO, um, various parasites. And the, the key is you want to make sure you do functional medicine testing because if you just go to your traditional doc, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you're fine. You yeah, don't have anything. But it up. there's a lot of false negatives. So I recommend the BioHealth R1H test, and then the GI effects pro- profile is another good one, or the GI map. And that, that's a functional medicine test mm-hmm. that people can do. Um, you, can, you can get it through your functional medicine doctor if you don't have one. I, um, on my thyroid pharmacist site, I set up a few different like portals where people can self-order labs through various companies. Oh, I know sometimes it's like finding the doctor is half the battle. And, and I know some people like to do like me, like to do their own like experimenting. So there's, you know, resources out there for, for you that you can, <laughs> you, you know, take advantage of to, to do your own testing. You don't necessarily need to be dependent on a doctor. Mm, that's awesome. I love that because mm-hmm. conventional medicine just really is there's <laughs> the whole yeast and parasites and whatever. They look at you like, no, you look healthy. We're just not going to test that. It's like, ah, seriously? <laughs> Frustrating. The, yeah, the other thing with like blastocystis hominis, for example, they're like, oh, well, it's commensal. It's supposed to be there. Like it, it, right. it's not pathogenic. But then studies show that it does cause leaky gut. And then people with irritable bowel syndrome, once they get rid of it, wow, the irritable bowel syndrome goes away. But it's like, but right. but no, it's supposed to be there. It's like, no. <laughs> You're like, well, the irritable bowel okay. sy- uh, uh, syndrome isn't supposed to be there, so can we just do that for that? I mean, <laughs> right. there's right. ways and then of, the like, hives negotiating. Too. <laughs> What's that? Or hives, right. And then the hives do as well. Like, those go away when you when you have it and you get rid of it, and then the hives go away. And it's like, hmm, I wonder if that was an accident, right? <laughs> Right, or they'll well, ask I wanna, you, have you traveled outside the U.S., or do you eat uh, a lot mm-hmm. of sushi? And if you say no to both of those things, they're like, yeah, it's really not an issue. It's frustrating. Right, and I mean, 
this like parasite, you know, like our pets have it, our like flies have it. Like it's like everywhere, and it's almost it's 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 not like it's not like a giant worm or anything that you would see. It, it's microscopic. It's um, a protozoa, so it's you know you wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye. It's like smaller than a bacteria. And what do people? What do you recommend people do if they do have it? Um, they can take medications. One of them is known as Alinea because it, um, there's a medication known as Flagyl that doctors would normally use, but it, the parasite is resistant to it, so Alinea is one option. Um, but it, it can be very hard on the gut. So some other options are doing Sarcomyces boulardii. There was one study that showed taking Sarcomyces boulardii, and I believe it was one twice a day, over um, six I recommend 60 days, um, 80% of people had eradicated the pathogen. So that, that's kind of more of a gentler way where you kind of raise your own body's defenses and you politely get it to leave versus like, you know, sending in the, the warships. Um, there's also right, like right, herbs right. like berberine and oil of oregano. Um, and I, I have a lot of these protocols in the advanced protocol section of my book where I go through like, here are all the infections that, you can test for these are the exact tests to do and here are the exact protocols you can follow and you know i provide medication options that people can get with their physicians i provide supportive food options and then i provide like a few different herbal types of um recommendations that they can I love that. um you know definitely you want to work with somebody but a lot of times that somebody might not know so this is going to be for your reference and it gives you action steps on, on what you can do. So it's kind of, I'm hoping it'll be like a bit of a, like a reference encyclopedia for it's people, a like the second section for guide. people. <laughs> right, yeah. I love it, the smart patients, right, as the patients get smarter, you know, and then they can present themselves well to their physicians. It's it's an awesome, it's awesome opportunity for for beautiful medicine, <laughs> the way I see it. I agree. My publisher and, uh, said... Oh, good. What did no, you say? Publishers said. Oh, you know, they were saying like, "Wow, you you basically fit two books into one because you have everything that people need to do to get started, and then you also have this really rich section of information for people who are very advanced." And they were like, "I don't think this has ever been done before." I was like, hmm, "Yeah." Well, I, I wanted to. I just want to make sure everything I do is like super helpful for people. Like, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to have people read something and waste their time and not be helped by it because it can be so discouraging when you go on these wild goose chases with, uh-huh. oh, you should try, you know, coconut oil will, will cure your thyroid. It's like, no, it won't. Right. Like, no, it let's won't. be real. <laughs> <laughs> Super helpful, but oh. no, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. Yeah, it anything. can help. Or setting a vision board will cure, cure, heal your thyroid. No, it can help, but, like, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> No, we just That's sit it. there and stare aimlessly today. at the That's vision it, board. Isabella, I'm going to make one What's today. That? I'm going to cure my thyroid with my vision board. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> it's not. No, oh my please God. make one and take all the coconut oil, but also know that, like, you know, there's, <laughs> like, you're going to have to take action and you're going to have to, like, um, you know, be in charge of your own health and <laughs> not just expect things to come from you, like. <laughs> Oh, and I just love, you know, you talk a little, you know, we all kind of giggle, but you talk a little bit about, you know, it always just makes me so incredibly sad. Uh, When people don't feel well, they're like the ultimate guinea pig, you know, they're they're willing to try anything. Even if they know it sounds ridiculous, they're like, yeah, but just, I just, you know what I mean? It's so depressing to me because, Mm. you know, um, I don't know. With your book, though, I love the fact that it was so clear and simple and concise because half the time these people that are reading your books, they don't feel well. So when you get something that's so overwhelming or, you know, um, you know, they're buying this single supplement because they heard, you know, Dr. Wheel say that or buying this supplement because this person said that and, you know, the, the amount of money that's in their cupboards on, on things that they've tried that didn't work. And one thing I really right. enjoyed about your book and, you know, recommend it to anybody that I know that has any kind of, you know, even subclinical symptoms because they can, you literally can go through your book and check things off. 
and make notes and even take it with you to your physician's office and say, you know, basically, you know, this person is very smart. You know, she's a pharmacist. This isn't someone who just wrote a book because they felt like writing a book. You know, and you can educate your physician at the same time. Uh, as long as your physician truly wants you to heal, in which case they will listen to you. And if they don't listen to you, then you need to find another doctor. That's as simple as that gets. But, um, yeah, just love the, loved the clarity in the book. It was very simple. It wasn't overwhelming. It was very clear, very concise, and people could just follow the steps. So it sounds like the, the 90-day protocol is going to be even just super tighter. I love it. Yeah, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I yeah, wanted to ask I, you before. Before we let you go really quick, if you don't mind, I just I saw a couple of things I wanted to, to say to you and, and ask you, um, you know, like I said, before we let you go, would you answer in one, in one sentence if you can or a couple of sentences, you know, people want to know if Hashimoto's can be in, um, put into remission and if there's a cure for Hashimoto's. And I'd like for you to kind of address that, you know, twofold really quick before we let you go. Do you mind? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and definitely remission is a state of um, – progressive state, so you can absolutely get your Hashimoto's into remission. And um, there's no cure for Hashimoto's, but what we do have now is we have the ability to get the person into remission. And there's also protocols you can utilize, like low-level laser therapy that help regenerate your thyroid tissue. So then you won't have any symptoms, you won't have antibodies, and you may not even have any damage left to your thyroid. And this may Um, about 50% of the people studied were able to get off of their thyroid hormones completely. So then for all intents and purposes, this might be, you know, like a functional cure where if you're exposed to the same triggers again or whatnot, maybe you would have it again or maybe not, you know? So I think this is a really exciting time for recovering one's health. And it really is in the hands of the, the educated patient to, to take charge and, you know, take advantage of the things that are, that can really be helpful for you. Oh, oh my gosh. What a great show. The whole show was, do. I know the whole show was like a flower field moment. Um, thank you so much. I know that we, I gave you some of those oils. Are, do you still have any? You need to go spray your flower field moment on. We're all going to put some on right now. <laughs> That's <laughs> my favorite you. one. I actually, I actually ran out. I'd love to have a box of it sent to my home. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get it on thyroidnation.com. Is that where I can get yes, it? You can. You can. Oh, great. You can. <laughs> I have to tell you, too, you I love you, your oils. You, you have somebody that you work with. Um, uh, her name is Amber, and uh, she actually sprayed it into her mouth. I just, you know, she's just oh my crazy gosh. like that. <laughs> oh, my she gosh. Was like, she was like, you know, if it's natural and all that and it won't harm me or whatever, I just want, I just want a small little taste. So she just took it and sprayed it, and she's like, hmm, I like it. <laughs> Amber's best. Yeah, she's awesome. So she Fortunately, loves those too, oils so. are okay. <laughs> I know. I know they are. I'll reserve my comments, okay. but fortunately, yeah, exactly. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, this has been just amazing. Um, we wish you all the best, and uh, we loved having you. And, of course, once you finally get time to settle down, which you probably never do, we'd love to have you back. So thank you so much, Isabella. You know I love you, and you know uh, we love you at Thyroid Nation. So hope to see you soon, and thank you so much and for all thank you do. You. Thank you for thank you everything so much, ladies. You do. I adore you both. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Have great a day. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. I seriously cannot sing her presence enough. She is just. An amazing, passionate, incredibly intelligent woman. Giving. Giving woman. Yep, very. Very giving, very humble, very considerate. I just can't sing her praises enough. Yeah. I, know. I mean, anybody with any kind of thyroid problem that doesn't know her is missing out incredibly I know. on I know. just crazy comprehensive information. She and makes if you it want easier. to check out the book. And you want to pre-order it, you need to pre-order go to thyroidpharmacist.com yeah. slash protocol and slash. And there's a video which you can see her, and she's fantastic, of course, and all the information you need. So um, check it out and get the book. Get the book. Oh, and I, did, I even love the, uh, yeah, the pre-order of the book. I just love if you mm-hmm. go onto her site, thyroidpharmacist.com. 
uh, and you just kind of scroll down her site, you just have all of this accessible information. You know, just even the way her website is designed, it's very simple and comprehensive. You just keep going down, and it has all of these different things, the Hacking Hashimoto's, the thyroid bundle. Just it's very simple. I love the way she writes. I like the way it's laid yeah. out. You Thank know what you. I mean? It's very it's very um very readable, very doable. <clears throat> I just realized I'm a stalker. I'm a stalker of Dr. Wen. <laughs> I think she has a lot of secret special loving stalkers, so that's okay. <laughs> right. I mean stalker's such a bad word, but I'm a huge fan. I really am a I huge know. fan of hers and um, absolutely adored her first book and adore isn't even isn't even the right are word. You, really? I was you reliant liked it? Are you sure? On you her first tell book. That oh you yeah. Liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She's probably like, "Oh boy, gee whiz, you know." But I was it was well, and a phenomenal I, resource. And it's funny because <clears throat> sure. um if she sent she, she sent me that, excuse me, when I was in Costa Rica as I said when we opened the show. And um, you can't really, like, you know, break that or write in it or, you know, put your rubber band around it when the pages are falling apart. And so, um, <laughs> but I could use it as my reference, which I did, and it was fantastic. And, of course, I loved it, too. And uh, when I had the opportunity to meet her in person this summer, she actually gave me a signed copy of the oh, book. Oh, cool. And, and so I'm going to take a picture of it. I've been meaning to do it for a long time, obviously. And But I don't want to. Like ruin it, so like I use the other thing, oh. for, and then I like. <laughs> so it's all pristine looking. So don't get misled when you see Tiffany's picture that hers has a rubber band around it, and then you see my pretty one, and it doesn't, because I read it just as much as anybody else, and I have notes and all that kind of stuff. So just to let you know. Uh, no, Robert Tishman's book is my is my rubber band book. That's my. Yes, it that's is. That's my. I abuse rubber. that book. It's terrible. It's very sad. Well, it's rubber not band worthy. Great. It's rubber <laughs> rubber band worthy, and uh, our hashtag and um, mindful sweating for the day. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oh, god, oh, we're terrible. I just had some brain awake too, so we're I'm all over the place. Okay. Did you? As I'm gonna always, go take okay, a nap. As always, let me tell everybody, we thank you so much for listening. Uh, we have such a great time uh, doing our show every week, and we really, really appreciate it. If you like the show, too, we'd love a review on um, iTunes. You go to iTunes and search uh, Thyroid Nation Radio, and it's right there. Plus, I'm going to soon have a little spot where you can just click on it and write a review um, immediately once I get my thyroid, Nation doc, I mean, my thyroid Radio page set up, so I'll make it easier. But until then... Check us out on iTunes and give us a little thumbs up if you like what we do. Awesome, awesome. Yes, please. Of course, be sure to check out Thyroid Nation's Essentials at ThyroidNation.com. We made these products to just be a little bit more helpful, a little bit less toxic, a little bit more natural uh, to help you all out. Of course, they're you know they're totally applicable for someone that doesn't have a thyroid issue as well, but uh, we made these specifically for all of us together. Um, Brain Awake Inhaler is super helpful. Uh, for multiple things and uh, skincare, call me pretty. I love these names that Dana gave. We did just specifically for you guys, and um, we hope that you check and, them out and love them as much as we do. And What's that? of course, you could spray flower-filled moments in your mouth. We don't recommend it, yes, but it is definitely that. not harmful. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't do that. Yes. No, no. <laughs> but just so, clean, um, preservative, synthetic-free skincare and and some helpful uh, natural products for you. And uh, as Isabel said, it was her favorite, so it's nice to know, and nice to know she likes it. So check them out, as we said, and make sure to follow Thyroid Nation on our Facebook group and all the social media platforms. And we have a Hashimoto's and Grace uh, support group on Facebook where we, uh, you know, list all the upcoming guests and we have information and uh, people ask questions. And so it's a great place for support. Check that out. And thank you for most joining us today. Yes, most importantly, Dana, and I always want to remind you that wellness is a journey and takes continual maintenance and evaluation. Please make sure to always listen to that brilliant, dynamic body of yours and be mindful of what it is telling you. Yes. 
what a great show. Thank you, guys. This mm-hmm. is Danny, your third nation, Green Gatika, living in Colorado Springs. <laughs> and Tiffany Mladenich of Grateful Garden, bringing the... <laughs> uh, that's my know. line. I know, um, right? <laughs> um, and Grateful Garden and Mending Medicine. So um, yes. Tiffany has a new venture, so you have to check that out as well. We are all here to bring the collective voice of Thyroid Thyroid Worldwide so that together, united we heal. Thanks, guys. Bye. Great show.